what's up everybody we are here with episode 24 and if everything goes well the chat will work this time hopefully fingers crossed i'm ready to refresh it if i need to this episode is actually going to be action-packed i was worried a couple days ago we wouldn't have enough stuff to talk about but stuff has happened again if you guys see the topics up on the screen the fourth one the quick shots pew, 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 pew. that's right is. we got a new sound effect for the quick shots there's actually going to be a lot of stuff to talk about in there so there's a lot of little things that happen that we'll get reactions on again chat is supposed to be on the screen which i'm going to work on because it's not working apparently while buff talks about his weekend how was it what's going on how's it going yeah i had a, I, <laughs> I had too good of a weekend actually was out uh out on the water on saturday and uh did some some day drinking and some sun on the boat we were anchored out with a good good sun-filled day and uh i kept the party going <laughs> when i got home a little too hard so nursing a a nice hangover today <laughs> yeah that was uh noticeable we played a little uh fortunes keep over the weekend checked out the new map oh, man. and uh it was something it was something I, there there yeah, is a I'm, go ahead. I'm not watching the bot i'm not i'm not gonna go watch it. i was i i just remember i was like i i was saying like i'm really drunk and i am seeing like three three of everything so uh if yeah, I, was I was even speaking coherent sentences i don't even know i was gone i was gonna say that there was uh there is a vod living deep within the bowels of twitch somewhere that could be talked about uh but but it's just it's just out there somewhere you don't ever know but i was almost on that same level and somehow we actually got wins like i don't even know how we did how we pulled that off did that I contribute? Happened. Did I contribute to those wins? Or? Absolutely. <laughs> All Absolutely. right. At least I was there for the moral comedy support, probably. I'm sure. Oh, it was entertaining, if nothing okay, else. Well, there you go. There you Heck go. Heck yeah. <laughs> I guess, man. What's up with the chat? I don't know what to tell you. I'll try to keep working on it as we go. I'll try was, to do my it, best. Yeah, I fixed it. It ended up getting fixed uh, last time, so hopefully we'll sort it out. Trying to refresh it. Streamlabs, you got to pull together like. Right now, the production team is just scrambling behind the scenes to try to get this stuff figured out. Double time. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, it works soon. I refreshed it a couple times. Yeah, we'll uh, get but it anyway, going. Don't worry. Yeah, this weekend, I had a pretty good one, too. Um, I actually got a custom-fitted cowboy hat that I may or may not wear on the show. I, I don't know. I went to a store. I've been looking for one for a long time, and I have a massive uh, watermelon head. So I couldn't find one. Like if I pick up, like if I just go to a Western store and pick one up and put it on, like everybody would just start laughing at me because it looks like I look like Woody from Toy Story because it's so tiny on my massive head. But I got one fitted and it's right here and I might put it on later. You guys never know. It could get crazy. It might happen. Love it. Um, the other thing is generally chat is on the screen. Hopefully at some point during the show, we'll get it to work. I don't know what the deal is. It's worked for 23 episodes and this is 24 and now it decides to stop. I don't know, but we'll try to get it on the screen. And what that means is, guys, I love it when you guys chat on the screen. Um, I really do, uh, because when people go back to watch the VODs, you guys are a part of the conversation. So keep the chat going. We definitely read it. And at the end of the show, you guys can see on the topics, there's a chat Q&A. Shout out to the audio-only podcast listener. We still love you. We think about you every week. The show is an audio podcast. Um, if you want to listen to it, the link for that is down in the description. Also... There is a Scope YouTube channel where this VOD will live for now. Hopefully, I think in the future, we want to kind of try to grow that and maybe move the show over there eventually. Uh, but as it sits now, that's where the VOD will live of the show. And then this last week, we put out a lot of content over there. We took the show down because I know some of you or most of you guys won't be able to watch the whole thing or necessarily want to watch the whole thing. This show is pretty terrible. I get it. But... If you want stuff broken down into smaller bite-sized pieces, we had a video a day going out over there on that channel. So there was a lot of content. So subscribe to that if you're interested in some of that stuff. But yeah, that, that, those, are, those are really good. I like that because it just we broke up all the topics into uh, quick videos for everyone. So that'll work out really nice uh, if you want to go back and rewatch just segments and not have to, to navigate through the, uh, the live stream VOD itself. Yeah, so that that's the uh, that's the sh that's the channel right there. If you guys search that, or the link is in the description. Uh, you can see 
all the videos today i mean we had there was like a ton of clips on there so it was pretty cool it was pretty cool i hope you guys like it i hope it grows and uh we can eventually move stuff over there and then buff and i could still have our personal channels for like like in a perfect world we would have the podcast with clips and stuff over there and then uh we'd still have our personal channels for like up to the minute super fast news and this this show would be kind of reaction based kind of mm -hmm. talking about it and discussing it and stuff so we'll get yeah that. we're working on it have faith um so yeah i think the first thing i really wanted to talk about uh was the dice gm rebecca cutaz i think that's how you pronounce it did an interview did you see any of that stuff or any of the interviews or the videos I believe I saw some some excerpts from it. Uh, I I didn't watch the whole thing, so I'm eager to hear what what may have been said that I missed. Yeah, I have some of it pulled up here. Let me uh, let me get it going. Let me get the production team on it. Um, there was, <laughs> in my opinion, there was a lot of lip service. There was um a a lot of things going on. There were really two things of note um that I thought. I, I guess I guess I could say three. Let me let me get the screen pulled up for you guys. I guess I could say three. Um. The one thing she said is they worked with uh, Vince and Byron and Marcus and Alex, all of the new uh, upper management hires. So the GMs, the head of Dice, Vince Ampella, uh, Byron Bede, and Marcus Leto was doing a new Seattle studio. Who We got a little bit more information today. They actually put out a call for hiring someone, a game designer, to help them work on a first-person open-world battlefield game uh in seattle and she's talked about working with them i thought that was that was of note and then i have two articles pulled up because it looks like two different entities got interviews with her and it's really weird she says uh they asked about if they're working on battlefield only because that's been a little bit of controversy we talked about in a previous episode is it doesn't feel like the entire team is working on that some sources have said it's a skeleton crew and then uh ea came out and said everybody's working on 2042 what she said was we are only focusing on battlefield 2042 there's no time for anything else this is what we want to do in three years we want to be the first person shooter powerhouse that dice deserves to be and that's what we're going for so a three-year time timeline i don't know what to make of that um I don't know if that means do what interesting for sure <laughs> yeah because they they said uh at one of the ea earnings calls that it still made sense to have like a two-year cadence for battlefield games mm -hmm. and then this says three years so i don't know if that means it's getting pushed back again i the would battlefield i would also imagine per potentially uh like the two two year dev cycle and then maybe a maybe a free to play option uh midway through that that life cycle so it'd be a two and then a a one so a, a three-year plan potentially maybe there will be some remasters in there doesn't sound like they're going to go into too much detail as to what the plan is though yeah it's hard it's hard to say at this point what they're going to do but it sounds like vince sampel and byron bead are are super into the mix and communicating with dice and they are going to continue to work on battlefield for now um, the other thing she talks about now in this article, she said most of the team is working on the next battlefield. Mm. So in one interview, she said all in this one with venture beat, she said most, and I called that out in my video is which one is it? Um, and then this so is the other mo th most being sorry to interject, but most being on the next battlefield or the current. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Good catch. Yeah. Most are working on 2042. Okay. She said, she said most. And in the other one, okay. she said, that's all they're working on. Okay. And in this one, she said most. Mm -hmm. um, here's the other thing, and this is really weird to me. I I, I don't understand this at all. Um, so sh they said, I'll just read you the question and you can tell me what you think. Because this is where she, they, they started talking about the future games. Um, in her statement that she put on Twitter, uh, she announced that she was working on uh, the metaverse and stuff like that a bunch of weird buzzwords that we hear about the future and stuff like that just mm -hmm. hope we don't hear nfts um she said they asked uh i've spent a lot of time talking to brendan green about the ambitions he has for metaverse like games now this is the question from games beat one of his main ideas is that this combination of human game design user generated content and ai together is going to be needed in order to create these vast worlds that everybody wants or seems to want so her answer to this and I, this is weird. Like, I don't, I want to see what you think. 
My dream is to be able to provide a spot defined gameplay experience, a gameplay experience that's adapted to each player. If you're a great sniper at 150 meters, or maybe you're a bad sniper like me at more like 36 meters, we know that and will provide an experience for you. That's my dream that we can make that for you. The question is who will be first and win? Now, is she saying a multiplayer game that each user, even though they're in the same match is going to have different experiences based on how they play? That is weird. And I, I would say <laughs> it's kind of what it sounds like, right? But I, it sounds like there will be, it sounds like th there's trying to go for a variety of similar to another powerhouse FPS title we've talked about that has a little bit of something for everybody um, is kind of what it sounds like. But who knows with Battlefield at this point, it sounds good what I'm hearing so far. But again, it, I, it leaves a lot of questions, right? What is what does any of this actually mean with this three year plan? We're going to be back on top type type stuff that we're hearing from her right now. Yeah, it's hard to tell what that means. And then um, a lot of stuff they're talking about. Uh, she talked about innovating. She also said uh, Dice deserves to be the powerhouse that it should be in FPS. Mm -hmm. Together with the teams here with Byron, Vince, and Marcus, that's what we're going to do. And again. They talked about innovating and providing new games and stuff like that. And I'm just like, give us a battlefield and like, please give us a battlefield. Yeah, I, I really think I'm it sounds like it, what I'm hearing here is they're going almost back to the drawing board with all of the new upper management and they're getting uh, the oh, shout out to chat. There it goes. It's working. Um, and now we're getting they're going to it sounds like they're going back to the drawing board essentially is what I'm hearing. Right. So. I mean, this this could be good, right? The formula, the, the question is, what I really want to hear from them is, hey, we know the Battlefield formula. We know we didn't deliver the Battlefield formula. We will be bringing Battlefield, Battlefield back and we'll be back on top. Like, those are the words of confidence I want to hear. I want to know that they know they messed up. They also need to, to admit or let us, the fan base, know who have stuck with this game forever. Uh, you know, I've been playing Battlefield since like 2003. It's been forever. So I want to know that they know how to make a Battlefield game still, and they know what Battlefield is, because the past couple of years have been a lot of letdowns. Um, and if they can, if they can at, like, communicate that to me as as a fan and a player who loves Battlefield at its core, that'll make me happy. Um, that's what I, that's what I personally need to hear, especially after after dishing out 120 dollars on on 2042 which was the biggest waste of money i could have done yeah i wish i wish they would take a little bit more accountability mm -hmm. um it would be awesome they have a little bit you know they said our design decisions bit. didn't resonate with fans and stuff like that but mm -hmm. yeah i get it um just real quick a man named nobody with the 279 super chat what's up dude thank you so much for the support i really appreciate it and shout out to nick for just coming in here and absolutely fixing the chat problem so yeah, Yo, Nick. I get, <laughs> thanks, Nick. So what Nick allowed everyone to do is chat on screen. And like I said at the beginning of the show, that is so you guys can be part of the show. When someone goes back to watch the VOD, they will see you guys as well. So you guys mean a lot to us and your opinions. I love it. I love the discussion that happens and I want others to see it. So yeah, um, other than that, I think that's about it. That pretty much covers it. I, I, The overall thing, like, do you think the other question I had, like the final question I had was, mm -hmm. Do you think this was damage control for the whole like skeleton crew thing? Wait, no, it's not. Do you think it was in response to that? Yeah, absolutely. I think they needed it. They, they realized they needed something from a PR standpoint to combat that since Tom Henderson's been uh, really the voice of or for the community, I guess, more so than anybody at Battlefield right at this point for the past, what, year or more at this point? It's been Tom, not anything from Battlefield. So I definitely think it was damage control, definitely PR trying to pivot um but they're still not giving me exactly what i want to hear here so i mean I, I i no one wants to see battlefield succeed more than me and I, I don't think it's happening with 2042 but they're sharing some insight as to what is going on in the background hopefully and hopefully this is actually what's going on and not just giving us bu buzzwords um but yeah like just give us in two years um what so what's that going to come down to we, we had 2021 was battlefield so we're looking at 2023 ideally if it does stay on the two-year uh cadence and in that case you'll have modern warfare coming out this year final warfare 2 so you'll have an off year for cod because they're on the two-year dev cycle now so that'll be 
definitely an opportunity for Battlefield to strike. And then at that three-year mark going up against one of the weaker studios titles, that being whether it's Treyarch or um, one of the other ones, which, you know, Battlefield's had a lot of chances to, to come back on, out on top over the past five, six years, I think. Um, I really hope they take advantage because this may be their last opportunity to do so. Yeah, and I don't know, like I thought about that, her three-year cycle, is that like two years the games come, the game comes out that it takes a year for that game to catch on and like bring people <laughs> back and rebuild their uh, their image? I, I don't know, but it's going to be interesting to see how it comes out. I, I was hoping they were gunning for that like as a Battlefield fan, if they could release in that window where there mm -hmm. is no Call of Duty mainline release, yeah. I think that's going to be awesome. I think a lot of shooters are going to be gunning for that window because that leaves a right. lot of players um, out and about. So, and and uh, similar to what uh, Justin just said in the chat, uh, you guys can see the new map and the new content was not enough i i'm still i'm incredibly frustrated and it's almost a slap in the face to me the lack of content with that game right but mm -hmm. that map and i said this the last couple of weeks it gives me more hope for the future games not 2042 a ship has probably sailed in my opinion excuse me but i think it still shows that the new people on the map development team all of which like all but one have came since mid development of battlefield 5 so they're relatively mm -hmm. new but they know how to make a battlefield map we saw that with season one so that to me gives me more confidence in the next title than it does this one but yeah absolutely and i also think this is more evidence to you know one of tom henderson's reports about really what happened within the the dev cycle of 2042 uh, maybe it was starting out to be a, a br and then they had a pivot and engine issues um I mean, we regardless of it being a relatively new, it's not the same Dice Studio we knew back in 2010 to 2012 ish. But um, it's seeing what they delivered with this new map versus what they launched with is is night and day from what I can see. Um, so hopefully, that, I agree that is that is good evidence. I just I really need them to deliver a, a gritty Battlefield Three type uh, game for the next one. They just need to go back and just do Battlefield and make that gritty. That same feeling that we had for Battlefield 3. If Battlefield 3 was remastered, I'd play that for another 10 years. So that's, I mean, just give me something, just give me that same feeling, that same core Battlefield, and I'll be good. I've heard that. I've heard that from a lot of people. You're not the only one to share that sentiment for sure. Mm -hmm. And the other thing why I thought this was interesting and could have been damage control, there was a lot of things swaying public opinion. And this is Twitter. And again, I know that, like the loud people that talk about Battlefield on Twitter is a very small minority of the entire player base right. uh, well, however big you can make jokes about how big that is right now <laughs> but they said you had jeff grubb and tom henderson both saying a skeleton crew so you had them corroborating that and then you also have the amount of content we got a year later also mm -hmm. kind of leaning us towards the skeleton crew and then finally uh they said wait we got to do something so they came out with this i feel like but it sounds like they're more so doing damage control for the future of Battlefield, not the present of Battlefield, which I think if we're looking at it logically, I think the reports we heard from Jeff Grubb and Tom Henderson are accurate. Skeleton crew, who knows what that entails, but it doesn't make sense financially for them to put more manpower into this game. It makes sense for them to do the bare minimum like we've discussed, fulfill their obligations to uh to you know their shareholders and the customers who paid for those that seasonal content which legally they're obligated to deliver it makes sense that they're doing that and they probably have guys on the back end doing bugs and things like that at the same time but it doesn't make sense to have the entirety of dice on that on that game and i think the content that was delivered with season one is obviously evidence to show that that's not the case yep so I guess we can move on. That sums that up really good. Mm -hmm. um, we can talk about something that is new, uh, Fortune's Keep. I don't know if you remember our initial gaming session due to your uh, blood alcohol level, uh, <laughs> but what, what were your initial impressions of the map? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't remember much of that, and shout out to Man Named Nobody because I know he came in and uh, and carried us a little bit, and I know Odin made an appearance, uh, I think, maybe. don't know. Yeah, Odin knows. Um, <laughs> Odin knows. Right, Odin. I parts of that. Um, yeah, I had way too much to drink. But regardless, yeah, I did get hands on that map uh, prior to our session over the weekend, and I, I actually was able to play a little bit this afternoon before the show. 
and I actually love the map. Um, it, it, to me, it, it's more of a a strategy type map is what I like about it because it's unlike Rebirth and unlike Caldera, it's kind of more of a callback to old original Verdance where you need to use strategy and uh, like outsmart uh, your enemy, right? You can reposition, you can move around enemies and reposition, get a flank on them. That's the type of gameplay I love. Um, and when I'm sober, I do it very, very well. So it's, it's, it, I'm enjoying the map a lot so far. I've had a lot of like pretty decently uh, high kill games, you know, between like nine and 12 ish, just on average, with just some regular play sessions. Whereas if I were doing the same loadouts on Rebirth or Caldera, it would be nowhere near, um, you know, maybe like two or three. So, I'm having a good time with the controller or the control, the uh, the map with my controller, and I'm, I think it's a lot of fun. So it's definitely a good a good change for the game right now. Yeah, I think it's a really good change, and I I hope they put uh, Rebirth Island back into it so you could play both maps. I think it would be a really good change of pace, like within even just your single gaming session. But mm -hmm. overall, I think the more I play the map, the more I like it. The first time I played it, I felt like it was overwhelming. This is much more vertical uh than mm -hmm. rebirth island you have an entire subsystem subfloor underneath uh with caverns and like a lot of the buildings like most of them i would almost say um have an underground passage that maybe leads to another building or something like that like there's just a lot of stuff underground and once you start to learn those you can really start to use positioning and movement and rotations to your advantage because you know where to go and you know how to get there so um i think that's really interesting and that's that's a really cool way to reward players for playing more this you know i always argue that skill-based matchmaking doesn't give you any rewards for playing the game because you just play harder people and it doesn't feel like you get any better mm -hmm. but i was actually feeling myself starting to play better on this map once i got more of an understanding of it and could really play with positioning so it's a much more traditional battle royale experience i think where right positioning is incredibly important so i thought that was pretty cool um, yeah that, and that's what i that's what i love you really need like there's been I, there was a bunch of rollers players um and you know meta weapon players and stuff and i was i was able to out position and win those games and that's something that typically wouldn't happen on rebirth so yeah the verticality is great because you can really you can really do some nice uh flank routes and out position folks which is good and then um the what's your favorite do you remember i don't know if you remember but what was your what's your favorite part of the map uh, I've actually been landing, so I, I, I like Graveyard, and I've actually been landing, I don't know specifically where it is, it's right outside Graveyard, um, there's that, there's that one tower up there in the, the mid-north, the terrace area, that, that circular tower of terrace area that you're showing there, uh, right overlooking Graveyard, and what is that, the, the gate, the, the gatehouse, or I think it is there, that's where I love yeah. to land, that little circular object overlooking Graveyard to the north uh uh the northeast of it i think is a good spot land up there and there's a lot of loot up there no one seems to land up there from my experience you get your loot there's usually buy stations in the area and then you have high ground right off the bat and there's typically a uh a balloon a launch balloon right there so you if you need to like if the circle moves uh further east or something like that you can get on all those rooftops and keep that high ground which is which is really cool so yeah that's kind of where i've been going lately yeah, that was that's a good spot. We dropped graveyard and had some success. Uh, mm -hmm. Winery too. There's a whole entire like below ground wine storage facility. Too bad you can't get actual wine there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, where you could uh, run around and, and loot up. And then by that time, there were a lot of people who had already battled it out. And you could kind of third party the people on the surface. Once you got looted up, you could make the push up. And there were some buy stations there. I like that. And then uh, had some good runs in the grotto area, actually playing underneath, being able to flank and move underground safely um, around there because not everyone went down there. Right. So I felt like you could really make some moves underground. And it, it really kind of, because you always traditionally think, right, the higher the better, right? I want the high ground. I want the high ground. But there were actually times where we purposely went down below and uh, and moved around and repositioned, and it worked well getting low as well. Yeah, um, a lot of success doing the doing the low routes, which you wouldn't really think, right? And I wonder how many people even know uh, the extent of that underground area, right? Because it goes, it covers a almost a good part. You can almost get to everywhere on the map through there. It seems like so. Yeah, because very, very cool. 
I still don't know exactly what buildings have access to underground. I think that's yeah. like the next thing I need to learn because mm -hmm. I mean, you could you can run into a building, drop down below, and come up at a completely different spot in another building and confuse or flank people. And yeah, uh, I think it's really cool once we once we get a better understanding of it. So definitely need to put some more time on it. But overall, sure. I think it's a success. I wasn't for sure. I know a, there are times though. If you're one of the first few teams to to start losing players and having to come back in resurgence, sometimes it can be really hard with all the rooftops and stuff to land back in and regain and get get your feet under you again. Mm -hmm. I did I did notice that. Like sometimes if you if you died off the bat and were trying to get back in and get somewhere else to loot up, sometimes the games were just chalk because there were people on every rooftop and in every building. There's a lot of buildings and certain people get a little campy, I noticed, but uh Yeah. It wasn't too bad. It it's it i i do like it uh you can traverse those rooftops but i think most of the rooftops they all they you have line of sight to almost every rooftop from all the other high positions so there's not really one spot where you're you where you have superior high ground positioning over over anyone that i've really seen yet even the towers you can't get all the way up in a lot of those towers um you can only get midway um so you're actually at a lower height advantage than a lot of the other rooftops um on the map so yeah overall it's a success we'll get some more time on it and uh and see how it goes i know you're loving the the nz 41 meta it's your favorite <laughs> it honestly it really hasn't uh i, I haven't encountered it too much because the map the map is so it's built the way i would want to that's why i love the Verdance because you okay it negates it, you can outplay the meta on Verdance. you can so far, it seems that like you can outplay the meta on Fortune's Keep, which that's why I like it. Yeah. And then um, I had a, I guess this would probably be the time to talk about it. I had a couple crazy tinfoil hat scenarios. My, I had one thought. I was like, why are all these weapons like no recoil? Like, what is with this no recoil meta? It's so frustrating. There's no skill gap. It's just like, if you're the one moving caught in the open, that's it. Because there's no, mm -hmm. you don't. They're not going to miss any shots. Right. What if, insane theory right here, what if it's because a lot they think a lot of people have those Cronus Maxes that automatically control recoil and they don't want them to be that effective? Like, Yeah, I, am I, go, I don't know. Am I know. off my I, rocker? No, I don't. I mean, I don't think you are. I know I've, I've played with some folks in the past, friends of friends who were like, who said they were using it for like full auto FALs and things like that. I've encountered a few of those. Um, but it, it, that's something you can't detect on console. And I've definitely debated. I'm like, man, why am I even trying with the amount when it gets hacker crazy? I'm like, man, maybe I just buy one of these things, <laughs> like, you know, because I feel like people, I know another thing is like people make such a big deal about aim assist on console. It, like I have to be honest, playing on console controller, you're at a, such a disadvantage with the FOV and my aim assist never does anything to help me out so i know a lot of people complain about that but yeah i think i mean that's a good point the the no recoil weapons have really gotten out of control so there's got to be is it the counter hackers coronas max is it, there's something else going on there because there's no way they don't have the ability to add even even uh the visual shake of the reticle which isn't even present so it's it's just insane you can correct and get on target so easy yeah and i you can take the recoil out of essentially any gun mm -hmm. so they made them no recoil to start with and it's like then now the cronus really isn't worth it it's a thought that i had and then i have to totally 100 percent disagree with you as a pc mouse and keyboard player i am constantly bitching about aim assist Dude, so that's just... is, it, it never helps me i gotta be honest there's there's been no no scenario that that stands in my head where aim assist has actually helped me in gunfights if anything it's gotten me killed Cause I'll be shooting at someone and then it will pull me off target to someone else. And then I die. So for me, maybe oh. my settings aren't right. I don't know, <laughs> but it's if, really never helped me that much. If someone kills me in war zone, they're either cheating or the aim assist got me. Oh, like, that's, it's 100% that's all cheating. That's all, all cheating. it could be. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's fortunes keep. I think it's pretty cool. We'll keep playing it. The other part that I wanted to talk about and cover while we're talking about COD was the DMZ zone. And I was trying to think when we were, when I was getting ready for the show and thinking of everything going on, did we hear anything new about Call of Duty? And uh, Ralph Valve put out an article that gave us a little bit more about DMZ. Um, not a ton. Uh, Nick with the 10 
some super chat. All right, you got one of these? Got one of these? There it is. I didn't think so. For. I didn't think Whoa. so. Stylish. So, uh, yeah, what we're talking about is DMZ. So Ralph gave us like a little bit more information about it as far as like timing, what we can expect, and also free to play. So I have that article pulled up. And we can talk about that just a little bit. There's not like a ton of information in there, but there's always conversations around uh, the DMZ mode because I wonder, man, I wonder so much how it's going to be. Like I start to get a little bit, a little bit of that excitement that I had for Hazard Zone back. But what he says is the new rumored RPG title is currently termed Project Nexus, and he made it sound like it's actually going to be a standalone, different game. Uh, has since become a high priority across Infinity Ward, virtually every Activision-owned studio is contributing towards the free-to-play project. So we know that it's standalone. We know that a lot of studios are working on it, and it's going to be free-to-play. Yeah, and I know this uh, this article, I covered it in, in a quick video too. It, it, it makes a lot of sense. It makes more sense to me than what we were hearing previously was dmz was going to launch with with modern warfare 2 as that third mode and then warzone 2 would come uh in q1 2023 being probably march right so it seems like what ralph is saying here is those that those split so it seems like they actually infinity word has even confirmed warzone 2 is coming this year so we're going to get it probably in december um and then we've heard rumors months back that there was going to be some free to play title that wasn't warzone in 2023 so it makes sense that that's going to be this this other mode um and also what ralph is saying here is, is modern warfare 2 is going to launch with campaign spec ops and multiplayer followed by warzone 2 later this year and then supposedly dmz will be coming q1 which i think is correct if i'm wrong it's going to fall anywhere between uh like mid january to mid march somewhere in there which is exactly where we were expecting warzone 2 to be placed um in the beginning so this makes more sense especially if this mode is still kind of a work in progress right yeah um and he talks about that a little bit as well but thinking about it um they're actually they're trying to make something for everybody with this game with the standard 6v6 mode war zone uh medium battles and big battles like battlefield uh with the ground war and the vehicle mechanics and destruction and then they're going for the tarkov survival crowd uh with yeah. this also rainbow six siege csgo crowd with the hostage mode, uh, just a lot of different modes that they're going for. Hopefully these all come to fruition because it'd be really cool to have a game that has all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he says in a tweet that the third mode has been under development for four years, so that's a really long time. And it's seen a number of changes throughout development, which makes sense with the uh, success of Tarkov games like the Cycle Frontier, uh, Marauders, and other extraction type game modes starting to surface and starting to become uh, more and more popular. So it makes sense that they follow this. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how they take a traditionally hard to learn type game mode and make it more, more, uh, accessible. Um, and this goes along with what you said. He said development for the title has been shaky, seeing numerous delays in development as a result of Treyarch's delayed premium title. So then this is going to help, in my opinion, ease that gap of no mainline title in 2023. This is going to be kind of to fill that spot. It feels like, Given the two-year space, Infinity Ward wiped the slate clean and revisited their content schedule, signing the rumored DMZ to release quarter one, 2023. So like you said, on the condition that Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 meet expectations. Official details for the online title are made scarce with an announcement allegedly coming in August. That was the other big thing. Uh, we should get a clear look at their aims and intentions regarding the brand new mode. So this summer still, we might be able to hear. Yeah, I really hope we do hear something um, around August would be really cool if we get even a little 30 second teaser or something. Um, this is the mode I'm looking forward to the most if it if it if it's kind of what we're expecting. It really depends on what how in depth they get with this. Right. Because, I mean, you and I both love Tarkov that we know they're not going to deliver a Tarkov experience. But if they can take a lot of the core elements of that and turn this into uh, a game mode that's more for that crowd, but on console, because everyone on console is always asking, what is Tarkov on console? When's it coming to console? So this is their opportunity to kind of get ahead of that and uh, hopefully deliver a game mode that, uh, that pleases. And this is the one I'm, I'm most looking forward to. And yeah, they're looking, it looks like they're, they're filling game modes for almost every crowd because they are in my mind right now, the only triple a shooter FPS shooter out there. Um, 
that's good about it that's dominating like they are and so they're going to take advantage especially with no new titles coming from any of these any any of what could be their competition right right it totally makes sense and it's just yeah it's going to be really interesting to see on that spectrum of you know accessible and arcade to to hardcore and tarkov you know like where mm -hmm. on that scale it's going to be is going to be the most interesting right. to me uh, i'm just hoping it's it's complicated enough the thing about tarkov that's really cool is like uh I think you get that kind of pit in your stomach when you find something good or you're using really good gear and it kind of makes you nervous. I think having a little bit of gear fear in a game is pretty cool. Um, I hope yeah. it has that. That's one of the things that Hazard Zone did not do was there was really no reason to go get hard drives and bring them out after one or two matches. It was silly. So um, I hope they do a better job with making more loot more valuable. Mm -hmm. And and giving people a little bit of that gear fear, I think would be pretty cool. Yeah, and I, and I think the free-to-play element is also really important, too. I know Hazard Zone, when they announced it wasn't going to be free-to-play, and I know uh, Justin brought this up in chat earlier, when they announced Hazard Zone wasn't going to be free-to-play, like the, the, the feedback from the community in general seemed like, well, that's a big mistake, right? Um, and it turns out there was a lot, other, a lot of other issues around it. But yeah, it would it have helped if it were free to play? Probably not. But if it were the mode that we had all kind of expected it to be, I think it would have helped Battlefield more if it were free to play. And this seems to be the, it seems like uh, Call of Duty's making, uh, <laughs> making a, uh, a, a well, a good observation about what Dice did wrong with some of those modes, aka Hazard Zone. So. Um, I think the free to play is good because it's going to get more people in. However, there's the offside of that is okay. Then you're relying solely on the anti cheat, right, to filter out the cheaters instead of a uh, some sort of entry fee, which I wouldn't be opposed to either. But you gotta, you gotta. It makes more sense for it to be free to play. Hopefully, there's just something like if you get banned, then you need to pay to get back in. Maybe would be cool. Yeah, something like that. Call of Duty is doing a pretty good job with cheaters. I know it's it's always a, a uphill battle. It's a cat mouse kind of game, right? With you know, cheat developers always changing their code and stuff like that, and they have to update the anti cheat to do that. It's not like you can make an anti cheat for a cheat that hasn't been designed yet, right? Like they have to mm -hmm. make it. So it's always like a playing catch up all the time. It seems yeah. like, uh, but they actually do a pretty good job with Ricochet. Some of the games that are coming out that I'm excited for, I'm a little worried about them. Like World War Three, um, I'm a little bit concerned about cheaters, and um, oh, there's another one. Some of those indie games, I'm just mm -hmm. worried about how they're going to be able to handle cheaters, especially yeah. a lot of them, you know, using the same engines that a lot of people are using those Unreal engines, and uh, cheats are probably fairly easy to make for that. So I, I worry about that a little bit. But yeah, me too. That's going to be that's going to be one thing that could potentially ruin it. I know that was a big. A big issue with Warzone previously, it seems that they've got, they're doing a good job now, but like you said, it's always going to be reactive, right? It's never going to really be proactive. Um, so that's, that's the problem, especially when it comes to free to play. Yep. Um, so I think that covers it pretty much. Um, I'm more or less pretty excited for, uh, for that mode. Why is that? I broke something in the overlay. Oh, I put it. Oh, no. Is that for our topics? No, they're there. Oh, okay. Why does it go away when it... Technical difficulties. That's there, right. it's working. Sorry, guys. It's working. <laughs> it wasn't working on my previous screen, but it's working on that. So the next thing uh, that I wanted to talk about was uh, Squad 3.0. We'll definitely keep our eye on everything, Modern Warfare 2. Uh, we're looking forward to that. So the Squad mm -hmm. update. Um, I don't know if you've played much squad. I feel like it would kind of be up your alley um, in your community, you know, kind of like in the, the Millstim type aspect and version of games. Um, squad's pretty cool. I haven't played 3.0, but I watched a lot of streams. I watched a lot of people play um, the 3.0, and it's it's a major update for the game. So I, I thought it was worth kind of having its own uh, own topic and own time to talk about it. Uh, they added a lot of stuff. I don't want to get really into the weeds. I just kind of wanted to show you guys on the screen, uh, see if I can zoom in a little bit, the sheer amount of changes that they made to this game. I'll just scroll through and vehicles added is actually incredible. Like for a, for an update, uh, for a game, free to play or free update. Hey, 
Oh. And fa- factions, weapons. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you know, we were just talking about Battlefield 2042 recently. Look at this update from Squad, who is not a AAA develop- development studio versus that. But yeah, this update's huge. And and I I haven't played the most recent update, but I, I have played Squad. It's a lot of fun, especially some of the modded content. Um, so this is something I'll definitely be, be jumping in and checking out. It's really a good time, especially if you have some people that have played it that kind of, if you're new, that can kind of take you in. Or if you find... Um, a server that welcomes new players and that finds some people find a good squad of people that will help you out because like uh when you're communicating and working together and completing objectives that's when squad is like is like at its peak uh Mm -hmm. in my opinion uh so yeah one of the big things that they've talked about is uh amphibious gameplay uh so they added amphibious capabilities to a ton of vehicles they also added uh new ways that soldiers and vehicles interact with water uh so it, a lot of it was focused around like aquatic combat. So now you can say, <laughs> you can say that Squad has more uh, water vehicles than Battlefield Twenty Forty Two. Oh god! Uh, <laughs> so so there's that. Um, but yeah, so I messed up the overlay. I'm so bad. Um, no, it looks it looks good to me. <laughs> but yeah, we have those. The, we have those IFVs uh, that, that are the ones that are, can travel to the water. So you're coming off the carrier and you're seeing here in the trailer in the background, these guys getting in these uh, IFVs go, or the APCs coming going through the water there. And you, you travel from the carrier to the land um, in those, which is awesome. And then this is the new Marine fa- faction, which is super cool that they added with all new weapons uh, to the game for that faction. Some are repeat from the U S army faction, but others are new. I think they added like the M 27 uh, IAR. You got the, uh, I think the M 38 DMR, which is essentially a version of the, the M 27. Um, so you definitely have some, some unique weapons specific to the faction, but they added a lot. You can just see, you can see how cool this looks, right? So uh, squad's yeah, it, super immersive i, I really and, love them you got some new weapons there you can see in the trailer too yeah this part of the trailer reminded me of it it's so cool to do this what they're doing right now in the trailer uh if you have a really good chopper pilot and the squad command tells you you know where to drop and stuff and you actually get on a chopper with a bunch of guys and get dropped in behind enemy lines is so cool like i don't know it's just it's a crazy feeling and like one of the cool things about squad is just everybody communicating and working together uh, mm-hmm. I, if you haven't played it much, it's it's really neat in that aspect. So like, the the commanders have their own and squad leaders have their own channel, and they kind of come up with an overall broad tactics or broad gameplay or game plan, excuse me. Mm-hmm. And then the squad leaders relay that to the squads, and they they carry it out. And it, it's really really cool uh, with the communication and everything like that. But they added yeah they added the marines. Was the is the M two four nine saw new? I thought it was new uh the, so the saw is for the army faction as well but you do okay. have different optics on the marine version the marine version has a completely different optic which i believe is like a, a four times optic on there and you have some some unique optics that are specific to the marine faction on the other weapons too which is is better than what the army uh faction has yeah and they added marines and then so yeah water combat marines new weapons and then the other big thing was a new map. So there you can see that mm-hmm. one of the new faction members. Um, here is the new map. Uh, they call maps layers, but it's a uh, it's black coast. So big, so big. yeah, it's <laughs> massive. Doesn't even fit on the screen. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you guys come in. I think the Marines start on the beach, and I think it's a beach landing. You take the new amphibious vehicles in. Some people fly yep. in. And uh, there's yeah, you come in from the carrier, just like some of the old BF3 maps, right? Where you spawn on the carrier, so it, it's super immersive. Yeah, it's neat. And uh, I've had some really cool. There's been there's games where I have like really cool moments where I just sit back and go, "Holy shit, this is really cool." Yeah. One of those is Squad uh, dropping in with some guys in a helicopter. We were taking fire. Everybody hit the deck. Everybody's hauling for medics. We're belly crawling through the weeds and stuff, trying to get up to this uh, to this little encampment to try to take it over and build a fob or a forward operating base. Mm-hmm. And because uh, that's what Command wanted us to do, and it's just really cool. Uh, there's a lot of neat things that can happen in that game, uh, but it, it's definitely slower slower paced and less arcadey than Battlefield. So it's not it's not for everybody. It is, but once you get in those combat moments, it is intense. You know, after you build your fobs, your forward operating base, 
and you move in and capture. And then when you get to the, the parts where you're actually fighting and engaging enemies, trying to take some of those points, um, the fighting can get really, really intense. And again, it's super immersive, but there's definitely a learning curve. So it's hard, it's hard to jump in there and like know what you're doing right away. I, I had no idea what I was doing. Luckily, I was on a nice server where everyone was like chill about it and help me out but yeah i was just building some bunkers yeah. some 50 cals putting ladders up unloading ammo and then about 25 30 minutes later we got into some combat <laughs> yeah unfortunately it is one of those games that has a really steep learning curve and you kind of have to know what you're doing uh but it helps to i'm sure there's a discord or reddit maybe where you can try to meet people but there also are new friendly servers that stay on there you just have to get in a squad and say hey i'm new is it all right if i squad up with you guys and as long as you're nice and you say, hey, I'll do the best I can, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Um, it's all right if I ask questions, people are really cool. I've had several several different servers where I've told people I'm new and, and they were really nice and it, it's it's a lot of fun. It's not it's not the bang, bang, shoot em up, crazy uh, arcade like COD or even Battlefield, but it, it has some, some mechanics that once you learn, you can have a lot of fun with. Every match plays out different because uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's so big. And this is another one of those indie games that i hope makes it to console it'd be really cool i hope i really hope it does too that'd be awesome on console um because it's really cool on it's one of those other games like we've talked about this right like but one of those games on pc that the console crowd would probably love right if we give their hands on it we've seen that with insurgency sandstone it seems like there's probably going to be a lot more making that jump to console because there's definitely a huge market there that wants these kind of games so i think squad yeah. would be a good one and squad's another one of those games that's that's uh kind of the only one like it it's kind of one of a kind you're not going to find that experience uh hell let loose is close probably uh but yeah it's it's probably quite a bit different um mm -hmm. the other thing i wanted to talk about i didn't spring this on you early because i wanted it to be I wanted it to be a surprise but there was some some twitter some twitter con controversy um about it so pc gamer uh put out let me zoom in so you can see here uh PC Gamer put out an article that got a lot of people in the Battlefield and squad community going back and forth. I don't want to pull up all those oh tweets and name names and stuff like that. But the PC Gamer said squad is basically Battlefield with logistics and it just got a major update. So that was the headline for their up for their oh boy. Uh, I can, article. I can see that causing issues. <laughs> yeah. So you had a bunch of Battlefield people saying a lot of mean things about how squad is nothing like battlefield and then there were i saw a few uh larger squad creators saying yeah it is it's basically came from a battlefield 2 mod mm -hmm. isn't that how yeah. it started uh battlefield 2 the the realism mod which is still out there today those guys that made that mod uh they that's exactly where squad came from so squad was born from the battlefield 2 realism mod or whatever whatever it was called you can look it up out there guys but yeah so i mean it's it, it, they're not wrong it is it is at its core what the mod of battlefield 2 realism was and they they uh obviously improved upon it iteratively since then but yeah i can see that causing a lot of controversy <laughs> yeah bullet can said project reality that's what it was called that's the one yeah yeah yep yep, yep. So, so where, where are you at on this? I, I think they're at this point, completely different games. If, if you're talking like battlefield five and 2042 versus squad. Now, I, I think they're really different. I think the only similarities are like taking objectives and guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think current battlefield probably all the way back since battlefield three um has gone in a different direction from where squad was now if you compare squad to battlefield 2 i think it that's where you can obviously you can see so many of the similarities right especially down to the class level the 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 way that game played squad leader giving orders all that stuff you have the commander giving orders um so really and that makes sense you know battlefield 2 project reality that's where squad is an extension of that but you if you if you compare squad to the original battlefield 2 you can see those similarities but modern day battlefield i would like i said anything after battlefield 2 um yeah I, I, it's battlefield itself went in a different direction i think squad more so stayed at the path that battlefield was at battlefield 2's timeline and then battlefield kind of split and squad took the reins from what battlefield 2 had created yeah i think that I think that uh, sums it up nicely that it, it started out really similar, but the paths have diverged since then. And you have a lot more right. 
uh arcadey twitch based kind of shooter versus uh a lot more yeah. closer to milsim and mm-hmm. they've added a lot of stuff since then right to make it more milsim there was yeah. just I, I as twitter does uh this devolved into people calling you boomer milsim crowd and saying oh they're annoying and it's boring and it's like let people but play what they want to play i wonder how many of those people actually played battlefield 2 right that's i mean that's something you always see is people judging things they haven't like Battlefield Two was not an arcade shooter, in my opinion. I, that was it. There was some elements of it there, but it was very, very different from um, any Battlefield we've really seen since, with maybe the exception of um, Twenty One Forty Two had some of those elements, but it was it was still pretty far from an arcade shooter, I believe. Yep, but. No, I just thought I just thought all the Twitter drama was interesting. Yeah. I wanted to I wanted to see what you thought. I think we defined yeah. it pretty well. And yeah. you know what, guys, we did it without calling anybody's player base dumb. Like we did. Yeah, it. right. Amazing. I, I, I would like to see a poll though. How many? How many of the the Battlefield crowd who were making those comments actually played a good amount of Battlefield too? Because I think if you play Battlefield two, you can you you can see. But yeah, I I, I agree. Regardless, at the end of the day. Each each game has their fan base, um, and they both do different things now. So, whichever one you like, good for you. And I, and I'm one of those that have found enjoyment in both, mm-hmm. so different kinds and stuff like that. But but yeah. Um. So yeah, I think that covers Squad 3.0. It's actually another little thing to add, I guess, is that it's on sale right now on the Steam Summer Sale. So if you are interested in it, it is a little bit cheaper. Um. So that's cool. If you're looking to check it out now is a good time um there's been a lot of people streaming it so i've been watching that um and it, it's it's pretty fun to watch too uh especially when you have a good squad working together and communicating and talking you can actually learn a lot you can learn a lot of the terminology and stuff like that uh from watching a stream before you hop in um as well so now and it, yeah definitely gives okay. an idea of like what you're supposed to be doing too right <laughs> I, yeah. like, well, I, I love watching squad also it's, it's a lot of fun to watch I would definitely recommend uh, watching that as like a prerequisite before you hop in because it yeah. gets you a little a little ahead of, ahead of the curve when you hop in. Uh, so yeah, the next thing we were going to talk about, guys, are you ready for the best segment of the show? Quick shots. I <laughs> <laughs> love it. The show's terrible. Oh my God. All right, we actually have quite a few little things to talk about um, and react to um the first thing i wanted to talk about was uh we talked a lot about last week the ready or not controversy about how it got taken off there was some bad journalism some other things going on out there pretty wild uh but this is a little bit more uh down to earth what's going on they are coming out with a new map so ready or not continues to be a pretty good success story like how they've turned it around um it did the betas and alphas were really rough uh, they really leaned into the PVE aspect and are actually coming out with a lot of content now. So it, it's it's a kind of a cool story how they've turned stuff around. So in their volume 33, ready or not development update, we can talk about uh, the data center, which is the new map. And a lot of these maps have really neat uh, backstories to them, like the reasons why you're going in there. Um, and this is, uh, they posted some very looks at how they're blocking out the map. This one looks pretty small actually uh just kind of one building that you're going into then they started to do uh some some inside uh texturing and modeling with assets indoors and the lighting looks really good they still have to do the walls and floors and stuff obviously uh sometimes they let people play these in the supporter edition even before the texturing is done so you sometimes they play these blocked out like this um and get feedback state-of-the-art kitchen only the finest for the employees. You got the pizza box out there, juice machine with the microwave, everything going on. Um, then you talk about uh, the amount of dirty secrets and dollar signs stored in these machines is staggering. So likely what's going to happen is uh, like hazard zone. You're going to have to go in for the hard drives and stuff. So it's going to be pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think it's neat. I just wanted to talk about it a little bit because um, I think the game sounds really cool. Another one where you have to have teamwork, kind of mill sim, slow paced uh, game. But it's like a lot of those kind of backstories help you get immersed, in my opinion. Uh, so I, yeah, I think it's Comple- pretty cool. Completely agree. I, I love I love when you get backstories to like maps and even just like what's going on, right? And that was something I used to love about Battlefield when you had the, the factions like US versus Russian. There was a story behind it. 
that's something that when I'm going into it, it I love it definitely helps with the immersion factor. And I think this map look, looks really cool. And ready or not, still something I, I'm gonna be playing. I'm probably gonna be buying this soon and jumping in because I do watch a lot of uh, a lot of gameplay. I watch a lot of the the modded gameplay too. I was watching. I know Sandalo. I don't know if he's still in chat, but he forwarded me something the other day with uh, it was like a, a Spetsnaz mod. I've seen a lot of of uh, Navy Seal mods, and it just looks. It looks so fun. Like you said, if you can get a group of, of your buddies together and play it, uh, you're going to have a blast. And uh, this is also on sale, too, with the Steam Summer Sale. Um, oh, if, there we go. Which, okay. <laughs> I know what I'm saying, doing think, after this. Let me see. I think it says down at the bottom. Uh, I think it shows it actually on sale. Uh, yeah, it's 10% off. Not not crazy. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that's all right. But something. So, no, that's a cool game that uh, we'll definitely be keeping our eye on. Um, I actually have it, so I I kind of want to I want to play it as well eventually too. Um, Definitely have to get some games. I wanna, yeah, I'll, somebody I'll, I'll get that. Somebody gifted it to me. So, nice. all right, let's go on to the next <laughs> quick shot. Uh, that's never gonna get old. It's gonna get old I to everyone it. else but me. I love I know it. it. Um, uh, out of nowhere, I always say this, but they keep coming out with content. Uh, PUBG is actually getting a new map on July 13th. And PUBG is on sale as well because it's free to play. If you didn't uh, remember that, it went free to play. And there's a new map called Destin. And they have a whole website up for it. Uh, you can check it out. And it's pretty cool. Um, this is actually their ninth map. So we talk about games with content and map. Uh, PUBG, uh, love it or hate it, you know, we all play, a lot of us played a ton of it when it came out, but it is coming out with a new map. And every time they have a new map, they also seem to add a bunch of gameplay mechanic changes. So there's a bunch of those too we can look at. Uh, but PUBG, man, I, they just, they keep putting out content and I, I have to respect it for that. Uh, the game can be frustrating at times, uh, but yeah, we can go ahead and look at the teaser here, I think, and play that. And you guys can see what it looks like, but it looks kind of like a city. Uh, we'll we'll take a look at the map in a second. But have you played PUBG recently, dude? I've actually never played it because by the time it came to consoles so late, I was already just involved with other games. I know it's free to play now, and I know uh, some of my community plays it, so it's still something I gotta I gotta download and play. But uh, I've watched an insane amount of PUBG, so I, I'm very familiar with everything PUBG, and i love watching the gameplay um this is like one of the i almost when i was first watching gameplay this back in like 2017 around the time it first came out um this was one of my reasons i wanted to get a pc to play at the time so uh, i love watching PUBG. it's just something i gotta jump in and play um maybe i'll just end up getting it on uh, pc as well too i'm sure i can can run that here now that i actually have a pc that can play some games as well yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. Like the thing about it, like I will give my disclaimer if anyone wants to jump back into PUBG, what you're going to find is a lot of people that never left. So yeah. they're really good at the gunplay, at the movement, at the positioning, map knowledge. And, and PUBG has some really satisfying gunplay, but along with that is a skill gap. There's a lot of recoil a lot of the times. They shoot different ways. There's ballistic with the bullet travel and drop and stuff with the snipers. So there's definitely a lot of nuances to the gameplay and you're going to come across really good people. But if like I have the last few times I've played it, if you go in just to have fun, mess around, have a few drinks with your friends, it can be a lot of fun to drop in places, loot around, find some silly stuff. The thing I like about battle royales and uh, stuff about like PUBG is it gets you guys like if you're playing with friends, you're talking about where to go next. Like a lot of times with multiplayer, you know, you'll just sit there in silence and not play and not talk and just play the game. This gets you talking, having fun. Uh, there's all kinds of vehicles and silly stuff to have fun with. So if, if you just mm -hmm. take it, if you just go into it, knowing that you're probably going to come across some insane chads and just have fun, mm -hmm. get some kills here or there. It's a good time. This, this map, this interactive map is actually really cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm liking that. that. That's awesome. It looks really good. Yeah, so it shows, shows the swamp. Uh, these guys really have been kind of, since they got taken over, they have been kind of on the cutting edge of um, the Unreal Engine. There's a giant inflatable mm. chicken with a uh, theme park. That looks really cool. I dig the colors. 
Uh, this game's going to be interesting. I feel like PUBG is eventually going to get to Unreal Five. I'm sure, and it's going to be Pub- cool. PUBG Two or whatever. Yeah, and, so, and uh, that's going to be really cool to see what they do with the next iteration of the game too. Yep, this map looks really neat. Um, I'm going to definitely check it out. I always like to check out the new maps and stuff. They have a paintball course. That's pretty neat. That's awesome. And then uh, the town of Ripton. There's where the big skyscrapers and stuff are next to the. Wow, it looks pretty yeah. cool. That looks really fun. I got to be honest. Like that's a great that's a great looking map, right? And this game's been out since was it 2016 or 2017? Regardless, 17, right? 16, I think, for the beta. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So it's been out for a long time. They're still delivering content. And you made a good point there. I mean, look at the. I see some of the new weapons there. I see a beast sh- looking shotgun. But um, you're right. The one one key point you brought up here is like games like this allow you to they almost force communication, right? So if you're playing with buddies, like that's what I love about these kind of games is just not only are you having fun, but you're, you're, call, you're calling things out. Where are we moving next? You know, it's conversation and you can have fun while doing it. So it, the, that's what I love about games like this is um, you get to do that versus what you said, standard multiplayer, you know, you're not, you don't really have that opportunity. Right. And so you have, uh, they're adding new features like they do almost every time. There's there's features in this game where you can pick up downed enemies and use them as meat shields. That's um, so cool. You, you can pick up your friends and try to take them to cover, carry them, and, uh, and to try to revive and heal and stuff like that. Uh, they've added gliders and all kinds of different stuff to this game. It's not the same thing you played back in even like 2019. Um, uh, the ascender looks like they're adding a way to ascend similar to Warzone mm-hmm. to get to the top of these skyscrapers they're adding to this map an airboat that looks like you can go on land and water which is pretty cool uh the 012 world's fastest shotgun it looks kind of like an a a12 it's the uh, i think it, it's the same thing i think is the origin 12 from uh modern warfare it looks looks like the, the oh, same yep. thing right it does with that big looks- fat 25 drum that thing looks crazy yeah mhm and a, a utility parachute. Oh, this is really cool. So they're adding a, a parachute will be fastened to every player in Destin. So when you're on this map and you jump from a certain height, you'll have a parachute to always jump off. So that's really cool. That's, that's awesome. like Battlefield War Zones. So mm-hmm. As you can see, uh, based on these screenshots, it looks like there are a lot of skyscrapers. The lighting looks really cool. They put a lot of these at kind of dusk at sunset and the lighting looks really neat. Uh, the colors look cool on this map. Um, gas station, the dam um yeah it comes out on july 13th so there's definitely worth checking out because it doesn't cost anything so i would definitely recommend people looking at it yeah Um, i might have to to finally do it right i've been i've been dreaming of playing it for so long i guess the only daunting thing is is uh like you said the skill gap so i'll i'll try it out probably probably get dominated but at least see how it is yeah but every once in a while you take you take someone with you and that that feels there you go all right, so the next thing that I wanted to talk about on Quick Shots is uh, some controversy with the day before. This is a game we've talked about, a lot of people have talked about. I actually found out in my research uh, for this that this game is the most wish listed game on Steam, which is pretty crazy with all the wow. games on Steam. This one is the most sought after, apparently. Um, so yeah, it's a survival shooter that's been, I don't know if they've done crowdfunding. I feel like they should, um, but they updated their website today. And the weird thing is they said that this game is made by like, develop by volunteers, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so in, they did a, they talked with a couple of the lead uh, lead designers and they said in there that I have the article I'm pretty sure pulled up. Uh, we can talk. I can look at it for sure to make sure. But they said that the game is made almost entirely by volunteers. Some of them are paid. Most of them are paid in like gift cards and game codes and stuff like that. So. I don't have a good feeling about this game. I don't have a good feeling about it making it to 1.0. Um, it looks like almost like a pre-rendered unreal demo. And I don't know if the back end is there of actual gameplay. I, I worry about that, but it looks am- like the, the demo looks amazing. But I, like I said, it could be a pre-rendered, uh, demo that they put together, but like the lighting in the mall and stuff that you can see on screen. Sorry, podcast listener. 
um, <laughs> is is wild. And what they said, it was supposed to come out this summer, but they delayed it until next yeah. year to port it to Unreal 5. So imagine all this stuff in Unreal 5. And I, I know um, a lot of the coverage I've seen from this is from Big Fry, who I know you've had on before. And um, I've watched some of his coverage and looked at it. Yeah, this game, it looks awesome. Um, it's just a matter of will it live up to expectations and deliver right is this is this actual gameplay we don't i guess we really don't know i don't know if they've had any any play demos with any creators or anyone that's gotten their hands on it to my knowledge that could be that could be wrong but yeah it makes sense from what we've seen it looks like it's extremely popular this is one of those games they can deliver is going to make a lot of money yeah i don't think it really has even made it to that point yet but it it, no it it looks it looks incredible but again yeah, we just don't know. Uh, but I wanted to, I, since it got delayed, that kind of gave me a shaky feeling about it. And then they're like, this is made by volunteers. Um, that's a new one to me. I didn't, I haven't heard that before. So that's, that's pretty, pretty crazy. I wonder if they're volunteers, meaning they're developers at other studios who are just doing this in their spare time or, or what that actually means. Cause the game looks visually from what we're seeing, it looks awesome. Right. So um yeah let me curious what the experience let me, level is there let me make sure we don't have any uh bad journalism here we don't want that uh says uh yeah this is what i was talking about so this is an article from pc games in uh it's the highest wish listed game on steam higher than even starfield and it got wow. delayed till 2023 but in this video you guys can see some of the lead developers in an odd turn this is quote from the article in an odd turn of phrase this includes full-time volunteers who um work for salaries fantastic which is the name of the developers or the studio or publisher i guess sorry admits that the number of its paid volunteers is limited and the majority of team members consists of part-time volunteers who are unpaid and compensated wow. with quote cool rewards participation certificates and free codes cool interesting okay <laughs> so yeah i wonder I, if that's uh, always been the case or if they had i'm curious yeah very interesting i'm not sure but it definitely it definitely got a lot of people talking about it uh yeah it's like i'll give you an amazon gift card if you uh develop this game for me it seems like so i i don't know about that it's just another one of those things like that game honestly like looked too good to be true and then i can't believe they published that on their website uh nick says in chat exactly what's a paid volunteer that's yeah. an employee right like just how they said it and stumbled over their words uh, it's definitely cause for concern in a game that already has a lot of skepticism surrounding it, even for me. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know, cause that's a game, uh, that we've looked at before that we've talked about before. And, uh, just wanted to keep you guys updated that I don't feel that good about it. Knock on wood, right? <laughs> we'll have to see what, <laughs> what happens in 2023. <laughs> yep. So time for the next quick shot the show stinks um the tarkov events are going on there was actually a new one today i played it a little bit this afternoon before we went live and it like that's the word for it it's insane um so wipe is imminent guys like they brought everything back from the traders that you can get you can get everything for just a couple rubles so it's really really cheap which is actually pretty liberating when you go to play the games. You don't have to worry about dying because you can buy a chatted kit, like you can buy a medic kit for just a few rubles. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. What they did today uh, is really wild, and I died a lot. But it didn't matter, right, because I could buy new stuff. Um, but for Tarkov, everyone, everyone basically uh, caught COVID. And you have, uh, like... I think 400 seconds to live. So everybody has a lethal toxin, like right when you come in and you have to find these X 12 stimulants and it resets your timer. So you get another 400 seconds to live. The, the stimulants can be found in airdrops. There's a ton of airdrops. There's like five or six airplanes at once in the air uh, going on. And you can also get them from bosses and all scav bosses are on all maps. So, there's scav bosses everywhere aimbotting you, but if you get one killed, they'll have a stimulant. You can live longer. Also, there's only one extraction, and it has a time timer on it. So for the first like 10 or 12 minutes of the raid, 
you can't extract so it forces you to go find these stimulants kill bosses kill players and you and there's unlimited sprint too so it's everybody just shift w and you don't have any stamina so you could just sprint and you got to run to these airdrops fight over them, try to get them and i think what they're doing is they're it might be like a weapon balancing data collection right everybody's got meta gear and there's a lot of gunfights going on uh i thought about that but it, it's wild i died a lot <laughs> yeah it sounds like they're probably a I, the first thing that popped to mind is like experimenting with the limited time modes out the m's but definitely um i'm you i mean you know they're tracking the back end analytics to see uh, which guns are winning fights, damage outputs, all that information. They're going to keep track of it. It's kind of like an information dump at the end before the wipe. Um, so that's pretty That's pretty cool. It does sound like chaos. I know I was watching some footage the other day, and there was like seven or eight airdrops going on at once like <laughs> on the map. So it yep. does look nuts. And the, with the, the, what you just described uh, sounds that much more insane. I can't even imagine trying to. Yeah. Play. And I mean, to get into the weeds a little bit about it with like the community, I just saw a lot of people like I was watching Geeks I play it today and he was having fun. And there were people like getting mad, like, I'm not going to play it. This is awful. I don't want to lose my gear. It's like the game is getting reset in like two days. Yeah. Potentially. Who cares? And it's like people are getting mad that they're dying to lethal toxin. It's like you can buy a meta kit for like 20 rubles yeah. just nothing like i don't it's just fun chaos it's like it's so liberating to me like i'm using it i'm using it i suggest everyone use it to like practice right you're practicing your pve before the next wipe and you can run in you have awesome gear and you're ship dubbing you're flying around everywhere trying to find these stimulants and there's a lot of gunfights and like when you're playing the game to level up you know as a low level player a lot of times you avoid gunfights but this is your opportunity to not care about gear, not care about your survival rate, and just go play the game and, and get mm -hmm. used to the mechanics and stuff. And I, I think it's a lot of fun. It's it's it, it's a completely different game right now. Like some people yeah. love that, some people hate it. But I think it's a pretty cool idea. And the lore's kind of neat. Um, there's a whole they they tweeted a whole statement on like why they're doing this and the about the talks and about the biological response and why they're dropping in the stimulants. But yeah, uh, you can see on your when you go into your health menu, uh, you'll have a little biohazard icon and you hover over that and it'll tell you how many seconds you have left, like oh, to wow. live, essentially. And so it like gets down to like five seconds, you hit the stimulant, and it resets you to four hundred. So yeah, it just makes everyone run around everywhere. Part of me is also curious. <clears throat> I know you brought up the statement for like data collection for the weapons. I'm I wonder if this is also part of a like a test run and data collection for uh, arena mode, right? Because that's going to be a lot of gunfights, and this is this what you're describing right now is like the most gunfights you're going to have ever, probably in Tarkov right now. So uh, end wipe is always great for for PvP. Um, so I, I'm sure they're getting some some data um, collected as far as how how the weapons are going to perform against each other in arena when that comes out later this year, potentially as well. Yep, I definitely think so. Honestly, my only beef with these events and these end of wipe events is I wish it was communicated to the players a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, the, the lore and the teases and stuff on Twitter are cool, but I just imagine someone who doesn't have Twitter or doesn't get on Twitter that often that so plays confused. this game, you're going to yeah. have no clue what the What's hell is happening. Going on. Think yeah. it's broken? Yeah. Uh, he, Geeks had a really good idea. He said it would be cool if there was like a bulletin board, like an announcement board in your hideout. Like yeah. if you went to the resting area or something, or maybe you'd receive mail or something, like slip it under the door of something, your mm -hmm. hideout, and then it would tell you like the lore behind it and then exactly what was going on. Because I saw the tweet and I knew – as someone on Twitter that something was happening, but it takes a while for people to even figure out what the heck's going on mm -hmm. and kind of put the pieces together, which is, which is cool, I guess, uh, for that, that community. But for the people that want to just play the game and aren't on Twitter all the time, I can see where that would be really frustrating. And I've seen several people say that they're just setting out because they think these, um, these are silly and crazy and stuff, but I think that's why I'm enjoying them because it, it just feels completely different. And it's just like, yeah, you're playing Tarkov with those mechanics, and it, I have, like, no fear. I'm just running around, pushing shots, pushing everything, because you got to find a stimulant in 400 seconds or you're mm -hmm. toast. So you're you're just going around crazy. It, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and gunfights are, like, the hardest thing. You know, there's so so many times where 
I don't get in a gunfight and then you get into a gunfight and you just like, man, I just like wasn't ready to take that fight. So like you said, this is a good time to just get in and take as many fights as you can get the kits you want. Cause they're all dirt cheap and to wipes the best time to play. Cause you can, you can just let loose and have fun and everything. You can co- go in with full giga Chad gear, which is great. Yeah. I was taking tricked out mutants with thermals with uh Fleer oh, thermals and uh you can buy a like hex grid class six armor from ragman for like five rubles and oh alton God. helmets and stuff and it's just like wow. yeah you just get absolutely chatted out and run around shift w with no limited sprint <laughs> unlimited sprint and it's pretty neat um that's cool yeah it's fun to play and then it's gonna get wiped and I'm going to I'm going to be interested to see how I enjoy early wipe. Everyone talks about how wipe is. I think it's weird that a game has to be deleted and reset for it to be good. Like there's a lot of people waiting for this to even play. Um I didn't necessarily need a wipe, but again this is the first time I've tried to really immerse myself mm-hmm. in the game and play and level up and stuff. It's going to be interesting to see if the tasks feel repetitive to me. I'm worried mm-hmm. about that a little bit because you got to do the yeah. same tasks again to that's level a good, up. That's a good point. And, and I heard rumors. I don't think anything's been uh, communicated yet, but I heard a rumor Thursday may be the wipe going into Friday. have to wait and see. But, I mean, you're right. That's that's honestly – I've been playing Tarkov for a couple of years on and off now, um, and that's what I – that's honestly my least – I guess when you're playing with people, when you're playing with friends, it's good, but usually I'm playing solo – when I'm doing these quests. So like doing these quests definitely is not something I look forward to, but if you have a group of guys, definitely to do it, do it with, it's a lot easier. There's been some, sometimes where we've done some quests together and things like that, but it can definitely get repetitive, especially if you're so like, Oh, I got to do this now. got to do this, but level up the trader, got to go plant the, the comms, got to get the notes on woods, all this stuff. um, Just to get your, your traders to a point where you can, can use some of the guns you want but everyone's on a more even playing field which which makes it it fun the only thing i w- always worry about or the wipe is if i don't actually get in there and start grinding like i'm gonna be so behind by the time i try and get in you know so <laughs> yeah but no it'll be cool to see there's just a lot of stuff going on a lot of people think it with all the the craziness going on that the wipe is going to be usually on thursdays mm-hmm. so a lot of people are thinking it could be this thursday. i have to be out of town this weekend so that would make total sense <laughs> so all right luck. guys yeah it's it is i swear um i had to miss that whole week of summer game fest so that was great <laughs> um all right guys you know what it's time for it's the next <laughs> quick shot um we're gonna <laughs> i i can't take myself seriously love it. i love um, it the next one is uh ubisoft tweeted today that they're going to be at gamescom and i kind of with summer game fest Kind of forgot about Gamescom. I'll be honest with you guys. I'm sorry. Um, but they are going to be there uh, August 24th through 28th. Stay tuned for more news. Crash, why are you talking about that on a first-person shooter show? Well, guys, glad you asked. Uh, because there are several things, several shooters that are in development at Ubisoft that we could get some release dates and more information on. Uh, a lot of people aren't that excited about them, to be honest. But they are... Frontlines, Ghost Recon Frontlines, the Battle Royale, and also X Defiant. And then if you look at the replies on this tweet, literally half of them are people wanting a Splinter Cell remake. And Mm. we've heard rumblings of that for a really long time. So that'll be something people are keeping their eye out for. I'm not sure if there are any other stuff uh, going on. And uh, yes, Seth, uh, you mentioned that. I definitely want to talk about X Defiant just a little bit more in depth mm-hmm. um, because they, it seems like they are listening, right? Like it started out and I was of the same uh, same uh, mindset. It's a game that no one really asked for. It sounded like a squad based uh, hero shooter Call of Duty copy, right? That no one really cared about. But it sounds like they're really listening to players. They took off the Tom Clancy title, so it's no longer a tom clancy title and then if i don't know if you guys have been following it or not excuse me but they have these intern insider sessions with people playing the betas they're under nda so they can't talk about it but uh the development team publishes these blogs that show you what they're working on so the most recent one three days ago they talk about what they're working on game modes occupy and domination maps arena dumbo emporium liberty mayday uh noodleplex and showtime 
So we can already see that there's like seven maps right there. Uh, this week's focus, they're working on the Occupy and Domination game modes. And we've enabled more maps this week than ever before. So let, you, let your thoughts be known. Um, so yeah, there's just a little bit of tidbits of information. You can go back and look at the past insider sessions. And um, yeah, it might not be a game for you. I know if you're a follower of this channel or Buff's channel, uh, you're probably more into the grounded uh, first person shooters. This one is a little bit more wild cosmetic wise. Uh, but if it plays well, if they're really looking at, this has former Call of Duty developers working on it too. Uh, there's also former Call of Duty pros uh, acting. I know Aches is one who's acting as a consultant uh, for this game to help them uh, tune in that gameplay. So it might be a competitive shooter, uh, even with crazy cosmetics and stuff like that, but it might be kind of fun. So it's something to look at. A lot yeah. of people. <clears throat> when it comes to X Defiant, was not a fan of what I saw. That's, I mean, personally, that's not something I'll play. Um, I, I thought it just looked a little, you know, it's a little too goofy for me personally. And I know they got input from a whole bunch of COD guys as well. And it seemed like they took it back to the drawing board. And like you said, it's good they removed the Tom Clancy name. I think that was at least the smart side on their end from a PR standpoint. I am actually interested in front lines, though. I don't know what that's going to be. I know they did the beta a while back. Um, which was on on Twitch with some creators. It looks kind of cool to me for front lines is is like a BR alternative as well. I'm curious if they refine that gameplay. See, I know they took that out of the beta or the pre alpha, whatever it was they were doing there, and they had a lot of takeaways. And they were gonna they I think they announced with both X Defiant and front lines that they they hadn't they were taking them back, not not going for the release window that they had initially targeted, and they were gonna put more work in them. So I'm curious how both of those turn out. Um, like I said, won't probably probably won't play X Defiant, but the other the other ones I'm definitely interested to see what they have. Yeah, and this one's going to be along the lines of again, it's like a class based shooter, so uh, they're trying to talk about uh, how you pick your your squad and play off of each other, uh, similar to uh, to like Rainbow Six Siege and Overwatch, where you pick your hero class based squads. Uh, so you kind of put together a squad to work together, and then it's a massive map, Drakemore Island. Um, but yeah, it's essentially um, a, a hero shooter battle royale, which I know that's a lot of that's trigger words for a lot of people. Uh, but we'll we'll see how it plays out. It actually looks okay. Um, a lot of people have called it a Warzone clone, so maybe if it's a Warzone clone that's a little bit better, it might be something to try. Um, I'm gonna keep an open mind at this point uh, about it. But yeah, uh, there there are battle royales, hero shooters. The that super people game uh, saw a lot of success during its play test. It was really popular for a while, almost like a PUBG, uh, where players had abilities in the class system and stuff like that. Uh, so we'll definitely keep our eye on it. Hopefully, maybe we could potentially see something uh, at Gamescom about uh, front lines. We'll we'll try it. I'm gonna keep an open mind for now. I like, I mean, it looked more grounded to me than, than even Warzone, like movement, weapons, all that, which is what I liked about it. It looked like it was more, more grounded. I wouldn't necessarily say realistic, but a little bit more of a, maybe an immersion level there. Um, but yeah, who knows? Who knows what, what they've done the gameplay. Definitely just something to keep an eye on. Yep. So I think, well, I had one more thing and I kind of added this last minute to the uh, quick, quick shot segment was what is world war three doing um they they need to release that game uh i don't know if you've been following it very much uh but it's like I, they've been I, yeah, yeah go ahead well i've just they've been teasing stuff for a really long time and it hasn't been it just they've done pre-beta tests a long time ago this was a game that was supposed to release in open beta last march and they delayed it indefinitely and we're now uh three and a half months later and they haven't said anything like we have nothing about when the open beta is coming uh they've talked to some insiders about the store and things like that they've done their pre-open beta patch and test uh but they teased a new map, and then this is what frustrated me. This is where I was like, okay, guys, you you really need to do something. Uh, they teased a new map, and then when you went and followed the teaser, the QR code, it was teasing the Smolensk map that came out 
in 2018. So it's a map that I've already played. A lot of people have already played. Um, so I just hope with a game that's been worked on that long, they are ready to do the open beta really soon and that they are also um, ready to have more maps other than what we've literally already seen. Yeah, this is a game I've had my eye on. They actually reached out to me last year and, and um, offered me like, you know, some sort of uh, partnership contract thing, which I, I had every intention of taking, but had other things come up, so I couldn't. But, you know, that was back in end of October, maybe somewhere in there. Um, and that was, you know, that's a long time ago right now. And they're still not in the open beta phase, um, which is, is crazy. This game, when I, I remember the, the initial trailer that came out with this, I was so excited. And I, I was telling my buddies, man, I'm getting a PC just to play just to play World War Three. Um, I didn't end up playing it till probably like a year and a half, two years ago finally um and i played it recently obviously with the close bait and all that it's definitely made a lot of improvements i like this game um i'm just yeah what are they doing you know i'm not really sure what they're doing this is something i definitely if they can get it to a good spot um i know they've kind of teased console releases in the future um but this has this has every element of like game that i would want to want to play and it's something that regardless of what's going on with it i'm always going to be following um whatever news they have because it's it's definitely has all the all the elements that i would want in an fps so yeah i just think i think we're getting to the point where they they just they need to do the open beta and i pray that it has more content than it might because like worst case scenario is it's another several weeks and then you're starting to run up against even more modern warfare 2 news and then they release the open beta with a new map and it's smolensk that we've already played uh, during the 2018 release and it's been you know four or five years and <laughs> yeah blue the robots in chat if you guys are interested in this game uh he's an excellent content creator covers everything about this game uh but i was just thinking today about you know how we're we've been waiting and waiting for this and it, they just need to do the open beta like they've been mm -hmm. teasing it it's been delayed and indefinitely and then they start talking about testing progression uh the pre-open beta patch has gone out uh, a couple weeks ago and it's just like come on guys it at some point like we're all excited for it but at some point you have to be like what have you been doing for like four or five years well there was uh, a period of time there too where they were radio silent for like eight months right and there was no new news on it after they were acquired by the new publisher or whatever that was we didn't hear anything until until like uh september last year and then it's like you said it's kind of just been radio silent the only thing i notice is I always get the uh, Twitter updates that the, the server issues are being worked on. So the server issues is something that have plagued them since the very beginning, right? That's what kind of killed their pre-alpha uh, launch or whatever they initially did there in 2018. There's still, it seems like they're still having server issues. Is something I'm just seeing on the regular with my Twitter feed from them, unfortunately. So I, I think that's probably the main issue because they're in a tricky spot, right? If they release it in beta and they have the server issues again, um, that might be the end you know yeah I, I i don't know how much longer people are going to be uh patient with the with the game because it, it's been a long time if you've yeah. been following it since the beginning it's been yeah. a really long time so i just hope i hope it's uh hope it's really soon they need to do, they need to do something in my opinion yeah i completely agree we need to hear some update for sure so i think that sums up the uh quick shot segment i'll put my regular hat on so i don't look silly anymore ah, um dig, i'm digging it though that's your quick shot hat now yeah i guess we'll, we'll make it the quick shot hat that'll be pretty good um <laughs> yeah if you guys want to you got a little bit of time for q a yeah i can do a little little q a for sure okay uh yeah just let me know if you have to go no worries um yeah guys um i do see one thing in chat from chris h uh Rainbow Six Patriots. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, comparing that to Siege, Patriots was never actually released, wasn't it? That was shelved, if I'm remembering correctly. Maybe someone can comment and let us know, Chris. Because um, I remember hearing things about that, and like, but I, I don't think that was ever released. I think it was shelved, and that was something that everyone was really looking forward to. Could be wrong. Maybe that's something, maybe they'll bring it back from the dead. Who knows? 
long time ago. That'd be cool if they did like a surprise release of that. Yeah, that's like yeah. before my time of following the game. But yeah, Wikipedia Same. says it was shelved way back in the day. Mm-hmm. And Siege, Rainbow Six Siege was the replacement. And I think a lot of the hardcore fan base really wanted, would would have rather preferred Patriots is kind of the sentiment I, I, I hear here and there from some of the community. Yeah, it sounds like it. Um, I'm not sure. Mm. I hadn't even heard of that. That'd be cool if they're like at the uh, Gamescom, they're like, it's coming back, Patriots, prize release. That'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, you think about it though, Ubisoft really needs like a big win, right? Which is why it would make sense. Maybe Splinter Cell will get announced or something. They've kind of been been ticking off their their community, it seems like the past year or so. So I think Ubisoft needs a big win with a, a, a true Tom Clancy game. In my yeah, opinion. it would. I was kind of hoping, since it seems like uh, Ubisoft had to see somebody else do something before they copy it, I was kind of, I was kind of hoping that they look at the success of uh, Ready or Not and mm. maybe put a Tom Clancy title together that's like Ready or Not. Because yeah. they tried to do a Tom Clancy Rainbow Six extraction against the aliens. It's like, no. <laughs> Make a and game that was the same that was the same thing as a siege had like an event, right? Siege had some like offshoot event and Outbreak. Then that ended up yeah, and then that ended up being like a copy paste for extraction, am I right? Yep. Yeah, it was Weird. essentially just an expansion on the on the Weird. outbreak event. So mm-hmm. yeah, Ubisoft does some questionable things. Again, <laughs> I wonder if I'm maybe not their target audience anymore. Maybe I'm too old and boomer for that. Like I, I don't know. But what is their target audience, right? Because they built their they built their target target audience, and it seems like you still have that OG audience there, and that's who they're disappointed. Like if you look at uh, like the old uh, Ghost Recons, like even Advanced Warfighter, I think it was, and things like that. It's like everyone's always old Splinter Cells, old old uh, Ghost Recon games, and you I, you just look on YouTube. I remember during all this debacle with these new titles that we've heard about and we just t- talked about in the last segment. Um, everyone's just like, man, they, they don't make these games like they used to. And they're just night and day different from what Tom Clancy used to be, which is like very, very intricate strategy based games. Yep. Hopefully they get back to that. Hopefully they see some of these games that do that, having some success. And that's, I think that's what it takes for Ubisoft to, uh, to make a game is like, they have to copy it from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I don't, like if, I don't know i don't know uh Shpoo, if i'm ever going to be able to play this cycle i just don't know man i don't think it's for me <laughs> i would like to i should try it just to see what uh it's like cool, a Tarkov cool to watch here, here and there at least right yeah i just have a hard time with like spacey stuff i don't know it's just not my thing but yeah, I, mean, I, yeah, I could yeah, yeah. i could see a lot of people said it's Tarkov Light. And maybe that's something that DMZ is going to be modeled after. I've heard a lot of people say it's a Tarkov Light. So, so. I'm just going to, I see Chase in chat. Um, um, can he, I, he missed. Yeah, go ahead. Go. I was going to say, I'm going to use, can I use the restroom real quick while you talk about that? Yeah, go for I'll it. Go really fast. Right. <laughs> so, Chase in chat saying he missed the earlier part, but he wanted to know um, my opinion on Fortress Keep. Chase says, uh, I think it looks really fun. And looks like you can have some fun and interesting gunfights and actually have to use your brain, except all Vanguard guns are broken. I mean, yeah, Chase, you you basically just reiterated my sentiments for, and I think Crash and I kind of share the same opinion. And I was talking with Moo about this earlier because I've been playing a little bit with him also. And um it, our, both of us were, were saying how this is more of a this is more of a strategy map where you you need to use your brain again, right? So that's what I loved about the old Verdansk. And if you guys had watched my my old uh, how to win games or my solo gameplay on for dance where I'd walk through those. A lot of that is just outplaying and outpositioning people and outsmarting them. And this is one of those maps where, believe it or not, so far I haven't had issues running into meta. So so far I've had really good luck outplaying meta, which is you know I have a video series about outplay the meta. So so far I've had a good time being able to get around them, but I haven't really ran into situations where I'm getting fried by the meta. It's all about position on this map. High ground, there's a lot of different flanker routes above on the rooftops, mid-level, and even underground around the whole map. So um, this is, I I really like the map for Fortune's Keep. I think it's exactly what I needed. Um, I would still probably prefer Verdansk over Caldera if we're looking at the big BR map, but this is, in my opinion, 
way better than rebirth because it's slower pace and you need to think which is what i like it's not that that brainless mindless um run and gun stuff and i've been having a lot of good games just with my my old lvaw build and like an ax50 rocking like 9 to 12 kill wins in a lot of second places so and uh you know when i was like blackout drunk getting uh second places with crash the other night so um it's, yeah. if you can get second places like that i mean damn it it's got to be it's a good map which which guy do i shoot uh there's only one of them man like yeah no nah, there was three <laughs> there was three don't lie <laughs> Sure. sure but anyway guys <laughs> no i i think that that's an episode um i sure appreciate everyone everyone's questions uh everyone hanging out i love the conversation in chat it was uh it was super good um yeah just can't thank every everyone enough if you missed uh anything in this episode that you're interested in uh again the vod will be over on the scope channel as well as i'm hoping to do uh clips again throughout the week of mm -hmm. uh things that we talked about a little bit more bite-sized chunks rather than the whole um hour and a half thing but... right right that way if i mean chase for for you right if you missed the early part of the stream the whole thing will be up there over on the scope channel which i'm sure we have the link down in the description and then like crash just said we cut those up going forward we're going to try and cut those up to the different segments so you can find that exact video once we cut it up and we'll probably release them you know one video a day throughout the week or whatever um so you can check those out so make sure you guys are following the scopes channel there because that's where all the content will be hosted yep so yeah and just stay tuned to the socials for we're thinking about where to do the live broadcast and maybe maybe move it around or do something like that but we'll mm -hmm. just for the for the foreseeable future we're still going to be uh once a week getting together with you guys and talking about fps games it's been so much fun um i appreciate those of you hanging out it's it's, it's awesome Shout out to the uh, production crew for keeping the uh, everything working on the background there. <laughs> they had they had a tough time today messing up the overlay, and then I don't know why chat's not working now at the beginning of everyone. I didn't um, notice any of the overlay issues, so they can, they can get away with it. <laughs> it it's in. Don't don't tell them that. You don't want to <laughs> give them an inch. Uh, yeah. Sad ball, stop it! I'm not playing Garfield Cart lasagna bundle <laughs> i'm not doing it i'll watch you stream it you need to stream it and i'll watch it uh, th thanks michaela i'll i might relay your message to him i like to keep the production team like a little bit scared like they might get fired and it helps them work just a little bit harder you just got to yeah, keep them a little scared that's how we manage over here that's right that's right <laughs> So, all right, guys, again, thank you so much. It'll be out on audio only uh, within the next day or so. And stay tuned to the Scope channel for clips, anything you missed. And hopefully see you guys next week. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Bye.